Yes, it is called charcuterie, like a chew, gazuntai, charcuterie. Don't, I think it's just a made up TV word, but everybody uses it, so I'm going to use it too. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. <laughs> hey guys out there in sawmill land, welcome back to Hobby Hardwood. And how do you know when sawing has moved beyond the hobby stage and is a business? When you're out here trying to cut some logs and it's raining yes you heard me right i feel like jim cantori sitting out on the gulf coast <laughs> during a hurricane going hey look there's a hurricane coming well that's about how i'm feeling right now hey look watch me i'm stupid i'm out here in the rain i got stuff to do and you know rain or shine chip doesn't want he looks at me like i'm crazy what do you think chip Probably wondering what in the crap old Professor Hobby Hardwood's doing. Why on earth are these going to get stacked on the air drying pack? What? Has he gone crazy? No, I have not. This is an important lesson in saw milling. This is the difference between sawing what you want to saw and sawing what you want to sell. So, this log had a very wide sap ring. You can see how wide this sap ring is. You can see how little heartwood is in the log. So, if I was to just go ahead and do my normal NHLA six inch wide whole heartwood face, this is a little wider than that obviously, then I'm gonna be wasting a lot of wood. So I like to go whole heart wood, single face. That's what separates us from everybody else. Which means that a lot of these boards that have a high percentage of sap wood are useless. I don't like useless wood. I had to pay for these logs. So this is where you got to develop a strategy. What am I going to do with these things? And this is a strategy I just did with some butternut right there. You'll notice it has bark on it. It's live edge. You'll also notice that it's not two inches thick, it's four quarter. There is a product out there these days that's selling like crazy <laughs> called charcuterie boards. Don't ask me to spell it. It's pronounced charcuterie, so I guess you'd spell it C-H-A-cuterie. <laughs> um, sound it out is all I can say. But charcuterie boards are basically live edge slabs. They're four quarter thick. Charcuterie boards, uh, especially during the holidays, meat and cheese, they put them on there, feed them to all their guests, that kind of stuff. And that's what they're for. They sell like crazy, which is good. They yield extremely high ratios of wood simply because you're going to edge to edge and bark to bark. I hate bark. And you're not having an edge trim, so you're not getting edge drop. So when you're sawing logs that have a potential market for charcuterie boards, walnut, cherry, a few others, then you have to think about as you're making your boards, which pigeonhole does this log seem to fit better into? And the best part of it is I can stack these boards right on top of my normal four quarter stacks of lumber so I don't have to change my air drying times. I don't have to change my kiln schedules. I don't have to change any of that stuff. I saw them, stack them, dry them, sell them. It's easy. There's nothing hard about running a sawmill. You just got to use the brain. This is the time of year to be sawing these things up because long about November, December, however many you sawed, you won't be able to keep them. So for the last few days, I've been sawing up live edge butternut, which I did not film because I had to get something done. And 
I decided I would start filming on this walnut because this is important. Let's just look at percentage yield right here. This top board, ugliest sin. Look at, I got a little bitty heartwood streak. I got nothing right here. However, when I flip this guy over, my heartwood gets wider, my sapwood is still there, but typically charcuterie boards are cut into one foot or two foot lengths. 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, and 20 bucks. Getting a little blade chatter right here. I gotta work on that. Yes, this is a hundred dollar board or more. And if you think about my yield, if I had edged this board to get the sapwood off right here, I would have gone from a board that is nominally 18 inches wide to nine inches wide. I'm not the best at math, but the difference between eight and 19 is a lot of money when you're talking about a board. I am pretty good at math and yes, that is a lot of money. So the strategy is slightly different than when you're sawing up regular high grade hardwood. You try to I guess where the stress is gonna be before you start sawing because basically once you start sawing bark to bark, you're committed. The good news is these are very stress free so I got lucky. And then as you take these guys down, you should form a full heartwood cant or one that's very conducive to heartwood cant. Of course, you never saw through the pith. It's this guy right here. And that's another reason I'm gonna start dropping down to here, start dropping down to here. And then I may get a couple there, but this is kind of a waste of time. You will see me saw through it a lot of times simply because it's quicker for me to cut through it with this sawmill than it is to stop. And there is the phone. And it's spam. Once again, I don't like spam. I don't like to eat it. I don't like to talk to it. So anyway, when we're done with this log, you're going to see the waste pile. And it's going to be real small. I'm going to take that non-edged wood, the flitches, which is what most people call them, and sell it. Let's walk over to the other building real quick, and I will show you. All right, let's go on in. This is the inner sanctum. If you guys hadn't been in here before, it is a pretty nice sized building. We have lumber stacks that go a long way. We sell a lot of wood. So let's walk over here. This is what we like to sell right here. All heartwood, one face, zero knot. You can have a little bit of sapwood on the back face. You can see right here. Now, ain't that pretty? Look how flat it is too. It just slides in. Anyway, this is our charcuterie board rack. It's full of one inch thick live edge, Kentucky coffee bean, pecan, nice butternut. We've got box elder. Yes, it is called charcuterie, like a chew, gesundheit, charcuterie. Dope. I think it's just a made up TV word, but everybody uses it, so I'm gonna use it too. All righty, let's get this thing going. Oh, and like butter. Good glaze, good speed. <laughs> Take one more on this side. We're gonna drag these back. That was a little high. That was a miss. 
I'll come back to another drop. Making sawdust. Fun. All right, I'm about eight, almost nine inches tall. I'm still a little off center. Take one more drop. That looks good. These guys pull it back. Now I'm going to fall down to this guy. And I'm going to flip this guy so that the pitch is down. That's called the dog board. Typically, it's on the back, but it's on the bed, and there's a lot of stress. So I'm going to saw that one. Put it down. That way, if it doesn't come out good, I don't care anyway. I'm going to throw it out. Let's look at our waste pile. It's very small, very high grade. I could edge this. So basically I have three different product streams. I got four quarter charcuterie boards, four quarter calico walnut, four quarter 100% hardwood one face. It's three different products, one different log. And it goes quick when you do it this way. And never once did I have to turn the edger on. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed this one. It is 5 o'clock. It's 4.27, but since I'm the company owner, it's 5 o'clock somewhere. And it's 5 o'clock right here at Hobby Hardwood. If y'all don't mind, leave me some comments. If you watch my videos... You realize I do read my comments. I also make videos of comments. So don't hesitate. And for Chip and myself and Martha, we will see you guys next week. Y'all have a good one. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Click on the links above to see more of our videos.